Hi friends, Buenos Tardes Amigos. Well, in my last video, I started to share the news going on here in Ajiji, Jalisco, Mexico, on the north shore of Lake Chapala, by sharing the Guadalajara Reporter with you. And then I got sidetracked telling you that old story about our first trip to this part of the world. And uh, I know thousands of you watched that video, but if you missed it, I'll put a link up here. Anyway, I thought I would continue today with uh, getting back to the news. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. And uh, I have the Guadalajara Reporter. It's a weekly English language newspaper that comes out here. And uh, last week's paper was kind of uh, boring, which is why I very purposely got sidetracked when I realized that. And not that it's a good thing, but this week has a much more interesting headline. Crime wave strikes lakeside. I think I'll just read you the first few paragraphs of this so that you can get the story. A longtime Canadian resident of Lakeside was the victim of a terrifying home invasion that appears to be the worst of a recent rash of residential burglaries reported here in various Chapala neighborhoods this month. The octogenarian who lives in a gated community on Ahik's western outskirts was awakened from her sleep by a strange noise around 4.30 a.m. And as she attempted to call the guard post at the entrance to the gated condo complex, the perpetrator grabbed her cell phone and smashed it to the floor before fiercely attacking her, gagging her, and throwing her into the bathroom. By the end of the prolonged ordeal, the assailant made off with a cache of assorted valuables, including jewelry, credit cards, personal documents, and electronic devices. Her, he apparently got into the house through an open patio door. It has not been determined how he managed to gain entry into the guarded condo property. Other homeowners point out that break-ins had previously occurred at several unoccupied homes in the complex. The La Floresta area was hit hard by criminals during the 24-hour period between July 19th and July 20. Uh, putting this in perspective, uh, prior to these incidents, only three other residential properties had been reported uh, as broken into in La Floresta since the start of this year, one in January, another in April, and a third during the first week of June. So, contrary to the headline, crime wave, um, they'll catch up with those guys. Uh, additionally, in talking about crime, uh, many local residents continue to be victimized by well-known criminal scams uh, several Walmart customers have recently been snagged by the wallet-snatching tactic of squirting mustard on your shoulder and then um, grabbing your purses and cleaning out your car by the assailant while they uh, help you wipe off the supposed bird crap that's been on your shoulder. Well, that's enough about crime. Uh, I'm as tired of listening to the news about the coronavirus as the rest of you, but there's a couple of things here I'm going to talk about, and then I'm going to move on from coronavirus news. Uh, this one here is Trump. <laughs> you know who that is, right? Trump. <laughs> Trump blames Mexico for the COVID-19 spike. Um, and there's a quote down here. This is Trump saying, Thank God I built most of the wall because if I didn't have it up, we'd have an even much bigger problem with Mexico. I'm going to leave you to your own opinion about, 
about this article. There's just one fact I'd like to point out. Uh, the new hotspot epicenter of the coronavirus in the world, Florida, it's not on the Mexican border. Tourism returns to Puerto Vallarta, but is it safe? Well, the local officials, the governor and the mayors and so on, say yes, and I sympathize with them. They have very hard decisions to make about opening things up or not, but uh, basically they say, uh, yeah, it's okay, go for it. And here's a picture of the beach at Puerto Vallarta last week. Very few masks and no social distancing, and I just refer you back to Florida. Uh, that's enough about the coronavirus. Here, soft drinks are bottled poison, says the health chief of Mexico. His name is Hugo Lopez Gatel. Um, here's a quote. We don't need bottled poison, soda poison. Actually, if I'm going to quote somebody, I should read it accurately. Why don't we need... <laughs> Why do we need bottled poison, soda poison? Why do we need donuts, cupcakes, chips that bring toxic food and environmental pollution. Well, my take on that is that I like my Coke and my chips, and uh, I've been known to share a donut with Lynn when she makes me go get them. Here's what the National Association of the Producers of Soft Drinks in Mexico had to say. They accused Lopez Gatel of trying to find a scapegoat for the pandemic. Nah. The politicians wouldn't try to find a scapegoat, would they? Uh, here's an ad for some restaurants. Here's one Elegante restaurant. I have been there a few times and really liked it. And I marked a circle around it for you because they showed the price. Um, 175 pesos, entrees starting at that. And here's a couple of their... Um, Entrees, French cut lamb chops, or pan sauteed scallops. Uh, I calculated that 175 Mexican pesos as $7.95. Very good food, and uh, I would highly recommend the place. What else we got going here? Oh, the Guadalajara Zoo reopens. You see that giraffe? I fed carrots to that exact giraffe. <laughs> uh, it says the capacity of the zoo has been reduced to 25% for its opening. Uh, the usual COVID-19 precautions are in place at the zoo. Mandatory, mandatory use of face masks, temperature checks, sanitary mats, and the application of sanitary gels. Luckily, the Guadalajara Zoo is spacious enough around 50 hectares. An hectare is like a couple of acres, so 100 acres, uh, for visitors to maintain a safe social distancing. There's something else I wanted to talk to you about today, and um, it's about masks. I've made my uh, position on masks very clear in a couple of videos ago um, that you should be wearing a mask. Well, they're always talking about uh, problems with the supply of PPE, PPE uh, personal protection equipment. And I just wanted to let you know that here in Mexico, it's not a problem. Mi nombre es cara de tortilla. No máscara es disponible y no hay problemas aquí. Mexicanos muy, muy inteligente. Buen día, amigo.
a little comic relief. In the business, we call that comic relief. Uh, speaking of masks, oh, let me finish with the zoo. A couple of interesting things. Um, the cost of feeding the animals is about 45,000 U.S. dollars per month. That's a lot of tiger food, ain't it? Yeah. Uh, the cost of getting into the Guadalajara Zoo is 95 pesos for adults, 58 pesos for children. 95 pesos is $4.30 U.S. today. Uh, speaking of masks, local university uh, unveils low-cost, altruistic, anti-COVID-19 creations. And one of those is a mask that you can see through because Mexicans like to smile at each other. And that uh, mask is um, nanotechnology as effective as the N95 masks. I'll be getting one of those when they're available. Uh, I don't know if I read that part. They're being developed by students at the Guadalajara, Guadalajara University. And um, the reason they call it altruistic is because they plan to market them without making a profit. For the good of humanity, Every week in the Guadalajara Reporter, there's this list of comparison of food prices uh, between Soriana and Walmart. Soriana is a big box store over in Chapala, kind of like Walmart, but not Walmart. And the Walmart here in La Floresta, uh, Ajijic. Circled a couple of things here that I wanted to tell you about. One of them is the change in the price of food uh, since July 2018, no, I circled the wrong one, July 2019 to, this is the 23rd of July 2020. So in a year, the prices have gone up 12.7%. Uh, I've calculated from the pesos and the kilos into dollars and pounds for some of these things. So what I'm telling you is dollars and pounds. Um, half a gallon of milk, $1.27. Uh, 18 eggs, they didn't have a dozen. 18 eggs, $1.77. A can of tuna fish, 67 cents. Uh, whole chicken, raw, 59 cents a pound. Pork chops, $1.94 a pound. Uh, you know, that doesn't seem right. I must have calculated that wrong. 94 would be about four dollars and Yep, that's right. Never mind. Uh, tomato bola, 55 cents a pound. That's the round ones, not the Roma. Potatoes, 29 cents a pound. And usually we get the, what you, in the United States you call them Yukon Gold. Uh, Coca-Cola for the 2 liter. Well, I call it a 2 liter. It's actually 1.75 liters now because they reduced it. <laughs> Another subject. Uh, the big bottle of cola, the biggest bottle, 95 cents. So, um, you will find in general that things are cheaper in Mexico if it's fresh food. Uh, with the exception of meat, meat can be about the same, uh, maybe less in the United States if you're shopping or buying it on sale. And um, canned goods, Cheaper, but only if they're made in Mexico, not if they're made somewhere else and paid a duty on their way into the country. Uh, Chapala okays rules for express building permits. And I can tell you from experience that 
it's already lots easier to get a building permit here in Mexico than just to go through all the red tape in the United States of America. Uh, here's an article that says, Life in Rural Mexico, How to Fry a Computer in One Easy Step. Um, it's about the differences in voltage in the United States and Mexico. And if you're planning on moving to Mexico, this is something that you should familiarize yourself with. The voltage in the United States is called 110. It's sometimes called 120, but it's actually 118 volts. And in Mexico, the standard is supposed to be 127 volts. It's pretty constant in the United States, but in Mexico it fluctuates. Uh, I've measured it as high as 135 volts in my house here, and uh, even worse than that is sometimes it's low voltage, like 90 volts, and that can do even more damage than high voltage. There's another electrical problem here. In the summertime, we have a lot of lightning strikes because of the uh, thunderstorms. And if lightning strikes your um, lines, the high tension lines in the street near your house, it can come all the way into your house and burn things out like computers and refrigerators. And the more things these days that have um, computer circuit boards in them, the more things that are at risk. My neighbor had a lightning strike and it took out his, um, his uh, car gate opener um, controller, took out a TV, it took out um, a microwave, and it took out a, a telephone. And uh, you can get insurance for that. He had insurance and they paid. I have um, some huge big capacitors in my main panel boxes that are supposed to shunt off huge electrical spikes. Um, and I don't know how to give you all the details about that because I didn't, um, I, I bought them and, and had them installed. Um, I've had them in there for about 15 years and I've never had a lightning strike problem in my house except when lightning actually struck my house. So it's I first became aware of a time that it hit my house skipping all of those capacitors and it was out there in my workshop part of the house. It came down a wet pine tree, jumped to the uh, three-inch steel beam inside the roof, which is covered in concrete, and I first became aware of it when I had chunks of concrete all over the top of my roof, and I wondered who's been throwing rocks up on my roof. Went in, into that beam, uh, took out the ballast in a fluorescent light, went around the room and took the switch for that light out. It actually metal, melted the metal parts in it and fused them together. And then uh, in that uh, circuit down below, I had an extension cord in, actually two extension cords, which went to a um, battery-operated drill charger charging the batteries. And it physically separated those two extension cords, and they were all black, uh, started out white, black where the spark was. And... Uh, it took out the drill chargers. It then jumped from there to a window sill, which was about this far. And you could see a weld spot on the metal frame of the window. Um, so my big capacitors didn't help with that, but fortunately it didn't get into my main electrical system and take out my computers and stuff. Uh, what I'm trying to say is if you plan on moving to Mexico, you need to learn something about surge suppressors and voltage regulators for your refrigerator and your TV and your uh, computers. Um, another thing to be aware of is that surge suppressors work by grounding and a lot of homes around here are not 
grounded. They only have two prong things. They don't have that third hole for the ground in their receptacles. Um, you need a ground for a surge suppressor to work because the way it works is that it takes the big electrical spike and it shunts it off to ground. So that it goes into the ground instead of into your computer. Anyway, learn about uh, surge suppressors and voltage regulators. I have three voltage regulators in my house. One is on my big TV, one is on my refrigerator, and one is uh, where I regularly have my laptop plugged in. Um, that's also where I charge batteries for my cameras and so on. I have never had any problems other than that one electrical spike which just hit the house. It didn't come into the electrical system other than that one room and that one circuit. Hey, <laughs> that's what I got for you today. Thanks for watching. Adios, amigos. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.